Hello everyone, B.O.B. here, and welcome to another episode of Labcraft. And I have been doing some digging. Um, I did have the bone mealer in this area over here. I took that down temporarily. I'm going to probably rebuild it in a better location, because it was kind of like right here in the middle of everything. Uh, but I want to I wanna put in my sugarcane field in here. And then at, at the same time, if we come down here... To a lower level. Right across from the tree farm here, we. Uh, well, I'm gonna. No, I have another space. I'm gonna build a bamboo farm in here. Um, so I'm hoping I got enough space on both floors. I didn't really count it out, I just kind of eyeballed everything. And I have an idea of the fields that I want to build uh you know we're just going to use a flying slime machine sweeper to just kind of knock down all the plants hopper mine cart underneath the ground to pick everything up should be pretty standard but for now i'm hoping well i'm hoping i dug out enough space i'm gonna go ahead and start mapping all this out so this is the size that just one of these fields is going to be um and I wanted to put two of them in this space. And so I clearly don't have enough space. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to push this wall back a little bit further. I kind of... I don't know. I don't want to destroy this shape in here. But at the same time, I had some other crop farms in this area I wanted to kind of put in. Uh, decisions. Decisions. Um... Either way, yeah, I definitely wanted to put two of these fields in here. So I'm going to push this wall back. Probably start off like over in here. And then that way I can maintain that shape. And maybe work in some sort of door into other crop farms. Because I'm going to be able to produce all of these like carrots, potatoes. Um, not that I have any real need for all the crops. But hey, why not, you know? And have the fields at least. So if I do need them. Yeah, yeah, I got a farm built for them over there, but where's he spawn? Right there. Like, I don't even understand. Like, I was standing right here. He's just like, oh, yeah, okay, well, hey, well, I'm here to inspect your build. Oh, jeez. All right. So I did go ahead and clear out a little more space. I put sea lanterns in the ceiling, made everything stone. Um, Back in here, in this corner, this this cave here actually leads outside so what i think i'm going to do is open it all up and have sort of a, a back door like a back entrance to this area um can even get out of here right now huh jesus i'm trapped here drowned oh okay so the river's right there um puppy no oh, that's the only bone I had all right but uh probably at some point I'm gonna come out here and light this whole thing up with sea pickles I, I mean that was actually <laughs> that was actually original reason I wanted to build a pickle farm um that and the ocean area sort of out in front of my base there's always always a uh, ton of drowned out here so i figure if i could light up this whole bay right and then this river going back into here um that should eliminate a lot of drowned spawnings over in that area gotta tell you this place is starting to look pretty good well, I've been busy. Uh, as you can see, I, I dug these down another block, and then uh, I got power sources underneath these smooth stone blocks that are going across here. Uh, and, you know, I just put the smooth stone in there in order to indicate that there's redstone torches underneath each and every one of those blocks, which powers all these crazy rails. And yes, it's all powered rails except for the curves. That's because gold is a lot easier for me to get than iron at the moment. Um, but um, 
I want to go ahead and get this one finished, and then I dug a similar pit uh, down by where I'm building the bamboo farm. Ooh, too far down. Way too far down. <laughs> um... And here we are. <laughs> but uh, I still got to take this one down another block. And then uh, this is slightly different dimensions because, uh, well, like I'll, uh, I'm going to be laying in the, the sugar cane in a very specific pattern in order to get the most out of the space that I'm growing it in. So I usually go by increments of four, whereas this one I'm just going to go the full... Uh, capabilities of the flying machine which is 14 blocks wide um, and then I think I went like 24 blocks long so yeah I mean these should produce quite a bit of stuff this will probably produce just as much as the two fields that I got up there just because bamboo grows taller than, than sugar cane uh, and I'm gonna have to close that in a little higher and come up with a more creative way of, of lighting that one up because sea lanterns in the ceiling isn't really going to be close enough to to light up the, the farmland so this is what i've done so far i uh, kind of put in my collection system here as you can see I, well i got two different hopper mine carts there uh one's going to each field now one's feeding directly into this this composter which will give me bone meal and the other one's going to feed directly into this chest which is going to give me the sugar cane now if i want i well, i could always just throw the sugar cane into these hoppers and get more bone meal um but one of the things i realized after i <laughs> built all this is i don't i don't think i left myself enough room for the flying machine to come in properly um I suppose maybe i should have built that first well i can always reroute the track if need be but uh next step is going to be getting all our dirt and stuff in here um now i'm gonna use i think i'm gonna put grass in it because you can you can grow sugar cane on grass the, the whole stipulation is it's just got to be right next to a water source right so um i'll do grass and then we're gonna do spruce wood or waterlogged spruce stairs for the water sources we're gonna put them in in a very particular manner okay so i've gone ahead and put the first flying machine in place just to kind of size everything up a little bit um i think i did this right <laughs> oh i guess i need a power source Let's do it this way. Um, of course, I'm going to put arms on this thing, but I just want to make sure that everything is operating as it should. Should get down here and automatically go back. Um, now, downside is, in order to fit this docking station in, I, I had to come back even further than what I had already dug out. So, as you can see, I probably am going to have to reroute my collection system somehow. Um, I mean, it's not a big deal, but I do got to dig out some more. And then I'm going to put some walls up, probably like glass on the sides. And then I'll just put like a solid block on the outside of the arms on the flying machine. So that way it can move right up against it. Um, and then here on the ends, to close it all in, I'm going to use leaf blocks. Because the, the flying machine can slip right by the leaf blocks. And it's it'll look good. Uh, so like this side will be open glass. You'll be able to see the sugar cane growing inside there. And then, uh, you, you know, you'll be able to see, like, the stuff going on in the background, the redstone torches and stuff. I might uh, do something a little bit more to make this area look better. Uh, maybe get rid of the torch spam and, and replace it with some other lighting source. I mean, 
be honest, the sea lanterns probably do enough, but I don't have sea lanterns in every spot. Maybe put one in the corner or put them, well, I can't put them underneath that. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I know I got to move my chest monster here because that's in the way <laughs> of, of the second flying machine. I still got to put in the staircases. And, and like I said, that's got to be done in a very particular manner. And then now, well, I got to push all of this stuff back a little bit. So, oh, yeah, I really want to get this done. And I, yeah, I haven't even started working on the the bamboo farm. But I'm like not as anxious for the bamboo farm because I don't have an immediate need for it, for one thing. Well, the main purpose I'm going to use bamboo for is going to be uh, smoking kelp uh, i'm gonna get a kelp farm going in here eventually too so that way i can provide continuous fuel for my super smeller but if you look in like my ores chest wherever that might be i got lots of coal to work with uh, so i mean i'm not i'm not desperate for that just yet uh so sugar cane bamboo since i'm already in this mode and then you know probably these other ones would probably be another episode well, both flying machines are now in, and if I go ahead and hit the button here, we can watch them take off. I think I'm actually going to put a target block in here, <laughs> you know, activated by a target block. I could be on the other side uh, of the ravine there, and if I see my sugar cane is all grown up, boom, hit a target block, and my farm will harvest up for me. Um... I did have to push this back a few more blocks in order to get the docking station in here. And then there's, there, I mean, there's still a lot to do to get, though. Um, I think the waterlogged stairs are going to be the next step. And the thing about this is, is you, you have to make sure you're all done underneath when you get to this step. Because once you start putting in these stairs, you waterlog them. And you have to take the stairs back out. That water source isn't going to come with it. So you have to either like bucket it back out. Or whenever you break it. It's going to pour all over your tracks down beneath this. So like. Yeah. I want to I want to make sure that I'm ready to take this next step. Before I start taking the step. Now as far as putting these steps in here. Uh, like I said before, th there's kind of a tedious way I want to do it. Um, so you want to maximize the amount of grow space you have here. And, and the best way that I've found is to break it down in four by four sections. So you go one, two, three, four, and then four blocks in, which should bring us to about here. Um, now, typically for growing sugarcane, it has to grow right next to a water source. So in order to grow a four by four plot of sugar cane you would normally have two rows of water well if we put these water law these water sources in in a very specific manner we can break it down so there's only one so if we come one block in we put a stair right and then go two blocks well come in go two blocks over right here oops i don't want it to be upside down and then we kind of do the same thing imagine this this two by two square right here so you want to do one on each side of the two by two square so we got one there one there one there and one there now every single block inside this four by four space that isn't a stair block it, it is touching a stair block meaning um I can grow sugarcane on every single one of these four by four, uh, every single one of these grass blocks in the four by four space. And that's only four stair blocks, meaning it would only be one row of water if I were doing it in rows. And then like whenever you do this, like this is why I did it in 12 by 24, because it's, uh, you know, increments of four. I can uh, repeat the same pattern the whole way across the farm. And I ain't worried if I lose some dirt blocks down beneath there. That's not a big deal. Um, where am I at?
And yeah, I'll, I'll do this the whole way across the farm. And it'll look a little, a little strange at first, but it's the way we're going to get the most out of the, the grow space that we got here. Well, it only took about forever, but I finally got all of the stairs in place. I got them all waterlogged, and I even got one whole side of this planted. And then I, I ran out of sugar cane. Um, as you can see, the, the parts that the uh, flying machines pass through here are all leaf blocks. Anything that the slime block touches is a leaf block. And that's because, well, they won't stick to the leaf blocks, so the machines will still work. They won't, <laughs> they won't get stuck in those positions. Um, let me go ahead and send that on its way. You can see the arms take off, and then I have the mine carts set up to start traveling off the same signal that sends the flying machines off. Um, I might at some point work in a clock that I can turn on and off uh, or, or something to make them automatically just keep sweeping back and forth uh, so I can AFK at the thing but I'm not too worried about that uh, I think I'm going to do like a manual activation whenever I see the farms full just go ahead and hit the target block and have it harvest up um, and th the reason why is because I don't want to be like leaving the area and having this machine in mid-flight uh, that will that will break the flying machine and I don't want that to happen um, so I think this is gonna work out just fine as it is and yeah like I said I could always work in a clock later on even uh, just to send a signal back whenever these things get back or whatever so it would continuously run if I wanted to um, but um, yeah I'm not I'm not too worried about that right at the moment I want to get this harvest back and start planting in that other field and the sugarcane farm is complete uh, it, it, took, it took a couple harvests of the far field in order to get this field planted in uh, the field that's closest to me here feeds directly into the bone mealer, while the other one just goes into a collection chest. And this isn't producing on, like, an insane scale. Like, seriously, uh, I don't know. I probably could have done something zero tick that it took up a fraction of the space and produced even faster. But this is cool, right? <laughs> um, you know, and this is bringing in the sugar cane. I have to manually hit that target block every now and again when I want it to harvest, but there's no need to harvest it right now. And, uh, yeah, this is the bone meal that's coming. Oh, yeah, three bone meal. That's not going to be a lot, but it, it really doesn't matter because it's just, like, excess here at this point. And I got all that. I can stick all that directly into this dropper. Uh, and uh, this is an auto dropper circuit set up to it, so, like, it's put, feeding that directly into the pickle farm down beneath. Uh, that's where the water stream is to put the bone meal into that. One downside is because that water stream is right there, and then the sugarcane farm's right over there, there's no way to hide this auto dropper circuit. I just kind of have to have it out there in the open. Um, I think it's alright. I think it'll be alright. Um, yeah, I mean, you could see some redstone through here anyways, but it was kind of a decorative decision because you can watch the machines take off from here if we go. Look at it go! <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a pretty cool system. Um, I'm wondering if I'm, I should make the bamboo even bigger, it being as though this didn't really... Uh, this doesn't really produce as much as I would have wanted it to. Uh, I mean, well, I mean, I guess if I actually let it grow, but yeah, if if speed is so what you're looking for, this isn't the type of model of farm you'd want to build. You'd want to go for some zero tick, of course. But you know, this is gonna work. Uh, occasional harvest. I don't have a great immediate need for sugarcane right now, so it's all just gonna stockpile anyway. Um, 
for now. But yeah, um, I suppose I gotta do the bamboo. Probably do that off camera. It's gonna be basically the same farm, just without the water sources. And it's gonna be, the flying machine's gonna be two blocks longer. But my friends, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and build up this bamboo farm off of camera. As you can see, I've already started here. Uh, so I'm gonna wrap this episode up, and you know, by the time the next episode begins, this farm will be in place. Um, so in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit that like button, and if you're interested in seeing more from me, consider subscribing as well. I would like to thank each and every one of you for watching, and wish you all a wonderful day. <laughs>